Hey you mob, welcome back to Deadly Kindies. My name's Kim, I'm a part of the Deadly Kindy team and we have a very special guest with us today. Hey you mob, my name's Willie Tonga and I'm a Deadly Choices Ambassador. Thanks for joining us, Willie. Today is Anzac Day and we will be acknowledging the First Nations people who have served our country for everything that we have today. Um, and by doing that, we're reading this special story, Charlie Swim by Edith Wright and Charmaine Ledden Lewis. For Uncle Charlie, a humble soul who took a little and gave a lot. And this is by Edith. And to my grandfather, John, who flew Catalina flying boats in combat. And to those with bravery in their hearts and altruism in their deeds, may we learn from them and become them. And that's by the other author. Charlie loved the smell of the ocean creeks and clean salt air in of in the clean salt air of broom it reminded him of the carefree sunny days of his childhood going fishing and crabbing with his brothers and cousins as a young man charlie and his brothers loved to run down to the foreshore to meet their fathers sailing into broom they were excited to see what he had collected from his beach combing trip along the coast Charlie enjoyed the simple life. One day, war came to Broome. Charlie did not like the smell of the plains and the fuel that wafted through the air. Life suddenly seemed dangerous and uncertain. During the war, Charlie's job was to clean and fuel seaplanes that anchored in the bay. The planes were carrying Dutch women and children who were being flown to safety in Australia. One morning, Charlie was working inside a seaplane. He suddenly heard planes flying overhead. They seemed incredibly low. Charlie went outside. When he looked up, he saw enemy planes swooping towards the bay. To Charlie's horror, he realised the planes were about to attack. Screams for help came from the seaplanes as people started jumping into the water, trying to swim to shore. Charlie dived off the plane into the murky water. Seconds after he jumped, the plane was hit and exploded into flames. In fear and shock, he began swimming to safety. Charlie saw a woman and her child in distress in the water, struggling to stay afloat. Charlie didn't think twice. He swam towards them. They were Dutch and did not speak English, but he knew they needed help. Charlie signaled for the woman, the woman and child to hold on tight to his shoulders. Luckily, Charlie was a strong swimmer. As well as watching for stray bullets, he was worried that sharks might be attracted to all the people splashing in the water. They passed other people calling for help. Charlie felt powerless, as he could only save the woman and her child. He had to stay strong and get them to safety. It seemed like forever before they were able to reach, before they reached the shore. There was chaos on the beach. The sea was alight with flames from the exploding planes and the sky was black with billowing smoke. Several boats had gone out to help the people in the water. But sadly, not everyone could be saved. Charlie was exhausted but stayed to help. On that sad day, more than 80 people were killed in the attack. Charles Dionte was an ordinary young man who did something extraordinary. He put his own life at risk to save a woman and her child. He was a hero, being humble and just thankful to have survived. He never made a fuss about it. In 1944, Charlie was awarded a Certificate of Merit from the Royal Human Society of Austra Australasia in recognition of his efforts and he was awarded medals for bravery from the Dutch government. And there's just a bit of an explanation about the war and what Charlie did. 
It says he was a body man. There we go. It's a great book, isn't it? Thank you so much. You can let us know what you're doing for Anzac Day and how you're acknowledging the First Nations people who served. See you next time. Thank <laughs> you.